All right, I'm here with Rafael Caderas. I pulled you aside for a minute um, because at the top of the show I mentioned that here at University of Southern California, the president of the school just canceled the speech at graduation of the school's own pick for valedictorian. And this is completely outrageous. Um, it's part of a nationwide campaign of suppression against pro-Palestinian voices. But I was hoping you could give a fuller picture of who is this valedictorian and what was done to cancel her here on this campus. Yeah, so first of all, we're out here in front of the Trojan horse at USC, uh, USC Trojans, and, you know, right here on this campus talking to students about this. Um, Asan Tabasam was, is the valedictorian. She had, you know, incredible grades and rose to the top of her class and was picked by the university to be the valedictorian and give the commencement speech, which happens every year for graduation. And this year, though, um, in the midst of a genocide in which Israel is slaughtering, you know, over 30,000 thousand people, almost all civilians, half of them children, the university here just decided to cancel um, her graduation speech. This Something like this has never happened before on this campus. And they're doing this, you know, uh, in the wake of a couple, you know, pro-Israel student groups on this campus accusing her of anti-Semitism for some of her social media posts for a link on her social media that says Zionism is a racist settler colonial ideology, which it is, you know, and this, but, you know, we have to say bluntly, anti-Zionism is not anti-Semitism. Opposing Israel is not anti-Semitism. Israel does not represent the Jewish people. In fact, as the revolutionary leader Bob Avakian said, after the Holocaust, the worst thing that has happened to the Jewish people is the state of Israel. You know, so the university right now is saying that, you know, they're canceling the speech for safety concerns. But this is a university that brought, you know, Ben Shapiro to speak on this campus. They protected him, you know, surely they can protect this speaker to deliver her commencement speech. And we're de demanding that, yes, Asan Tabasam should be allowed to speak. And everyone with a conscience, everyone who, you know, supports free speech, everyone who's opposed to this horrific genocide in Gaza, you know, should demand that she speak. And by the way, I also want to add, Asan Tabasam studied um, genocide studies here at USC. She studied the history of the Holocaust. That's part of what's motivating her to take a stand against this current genocide that I Israel is waging fully backed by the United States. So this cancellation happened here. Um, you were out at protests here uh, the, the very day it happened and you were out today. Um, can you give a sense of the scene here? And the mood and the response among different kinds of students? Yeah, well, this has been shocking to a lot of students. You know, people are really, I mean, someone just came up to me, you know, not too long ago and just was like, I am so angry about this, you know, and it, it, people, you know, know her personally, but a lot of people don't know her. I think given Asuna's minor in genocide studies, she is the perfect person to speak at commencement as valedictorian and she should have the right to do so. Um, I think they knew she was going to talk about the very prevalent genocide that's going on right now, which is why they're asking her not to. But um, I think because of that, she is the perfect person for this opportunity and she should be allowed to speak. They can't believe that their university, which claims to, you know, uh, care about free speech, claims to care about, you know, supporting um, Muslim students, all this kind of stuff, would cancel this this student for, you know, simply opposing like what everyone can see before our eyes is a, you know, unspeakable, unconscionable slaughter in Gaza. Let her speak. Stop being weird, Islamophobic, sexist. Um. Hate, stop hating Palestinian people. Stop hating people, period. Free Palestine. And let my girl speak, period! You know, there's also on this campus, it's very polarized. There are a lot of pro-Israel Zionist students, many of whom are very rabid and are just repeating, like, you know, pro-Israel talking points, saying that uh, all the deaths in Gaza, all the starvation, that's all because of Hamas, you know, and, you know, and Hamas is using people as human shields. This is complete bullshit, you know. Israel has packed people tightly into the Gaza Strip and is bombing them with 2,000-pound bombs. You know, that's the reality. Of course, Hamas is connected to the civilian people, but that does not give you a right to mass murder people, you know. We're also seeing a lot of people who are just like, they're hearing the news about this, you know, and they want to come up and find out what's going on. We have a big sign that says, 
anti-Zionism is not anti-Semitism. People are coming up and asking, well, what is Zionism? What is what is what does anti-Semitism mean? What are the definitions and all this? Just trying to understand people trying to educate themselves on this. We're also letting people know and getting out to people this new compendium from the revolutionary leader Baba Vakin about Israel, Palestine, the Middle East, U.S. imperialism and real revolution. This is actually a time when people are and need to even more be asking big questions about what's happening in the world, why is it happening, um, where the real interests of humanity. Baba Vakin gets into this in depth in this pamphlet with his work over decades on these questions. We're going to go in a minute to a social media dispatch from Baba Vakian that goes, that sheds light on why this suppression is happening, this kind of suppression. Um, because a lot of students don't really understand it. This is a big question. Students and faculty we've spoken to. But I was wondering one more thing, maybe you could fill in the picture, because this suppression here is part of a nationwide pattern. Today, as we film, it's Wednesday, April 17th, we're filming. Um, there was a congressional hearing this morning dragging another university president, this time from Columbia University, before Congress um, to go after her and insist that she crack down even harder against pro-Palestinian voices on campus, even though she's carried out tremendous suppression already. Um, this, is, this is part of a bigger pattern. Maybe you could fill it in a bit more. Yeah, well, like Columbia University, where you're talking about um, in New York, the president had already banned the Students for Justice in Palestine, banned the Jewish uh, Voice for Peace group on campus, and had literally just recently um, suspended several students, kicked, gave them 24 hours to get out of the dorms because they hosted a program on resistance in Palestine that was unauthorized by the university at Vanderbilt, and I believe it's in Tennessee, students were expelled from that school for protesting for Palestine. Not too far from here in Southern California, Pomona College, 20 students were arrested. More than a dozen students have been detained during a protest at Pomona College in support of Palestinians in Gaza. For doing a sit-in in the president's office demanding that the university divest its investments from supporting you know, companies that support this genocide. So as you said, this is part of a major nationwide attack on pro-Palestinian voices. No one should accept it. It's very important that everyone on this campus and nationwide demand that Asna Tabassum be restored as the commencement speaker at USC. And it's also very important, I'm very excited to hear that just this morning at 4 a.m., hundreds of uh, students at Columbia University in New York set up a tent city in the middle of their campus openly in defiance of the crackdown at that school. As I said, people here in this school and nationwide have no idea why this is happening. And they see it as isolated points as opposed to this pattern that you're describing. And this is something that Bob Avakian speaks to with more depth than anybody. And we want to play his dispatch from the social media, um, from his social media, where he gets into what is driving this and the vulnerability it actually exposes of this system. All right. Bob Avakian, revolution. Number 17, further exposing the reality behind the myth of American exceptionalism, the ridiculous and outrageous notion that there is something exceptionally good about this country and its great American democracy. In reality, this great democracy is actually a system of brutal exploitation and murderous oppression the system of capitalism imperialism enforced by the dictatorship of the capitalist class, which, on the basis of its dominant position economically, controls the political process and the police and military that violently enforce this system.
contrary to what is constantly proclaimed by representatives of this capitalist ruling class and its media, its propaganda machinery, the people in this country don't govern themselves. They are governed, ruled over, by a class of capitalist exploiters. What is proclaimed as the heart and essence of this so-called great democracy, the right of people to choose their leaders through free and fair elections, really just comes down to the right to choose between political parties that represent the same system of capitalism imperialism. The whole history of this country down to today, not the distorted and whitewashed history taught in textbooks and portrayed in the dominant media and culture, but the actual history and reality of this country and its role in the world provides profound, undeniable proof of the real, truly monstrous nature of this country and this system. In previous messages, I have shined a light on some of these horrors, and I have pointed to works of mine and others at Revcom.us, in particular the American Crime Series, which get into this more fully and deeply. As I said in my last message, no honest person could read these works at Revcom.us and continue to parrot the perverse notion of the USA as exceptionally good. And what is going on right now is providing further living proof that this so-called great American democracy is in reality a dictatorship where the power of the ruling institutions is used to viciously persecute, punish, and even eliminate people who pose a threat to the interests of the ruling class. Along with the murder by police and mass incarceration of thousands and millions of people in this country, which is continuing as you are listening to this, there is the vicious repression being brought down against people protesting the genocide in Palestine carried out by Israel with the full backing of the U.S. government and both ruling class political parties, Democrat and Republican. Colleges, and especially elite universities, have been a focus of this repression. Repression which has crudely violated supposed rights of free speech and standards of academic freedom. Students and faculty have been targeted, and even university presidents have been driven out of their positions for failing to fully repress these protests. Why is this happening? Because fundamental interests of U.S. capitalism and imperialism are at stake. Because Israel plays a special role as a heavily armed bastion of support for U.S. imperialism in a strategically important part of the world, the Middle East. And Israel has been a key force in the commission of atrocities which have helped to maintain the oppressive rule of U.S. imperialism in many other parts of the world. And this repression is happening because representatives of the ruling class in this country have a definite sense that if youth, especially at elite universities, begin to seriously question and act against what this system is doing, if the system loses the allegiance of large numbers of those students, that can be a big factor in creating a real crisis for the system as a whole, as happened in the 1960s. A crisis that now more than ever, this system really cannot afford when the whole country is already being torn apart by deep divisions with bitter clashes right among the ruling powers. So, at the same time as they are bitterly divided, the ruling powers of this country are firmly united 
in their determination to punish and intimidate, especially students at elite universities who have stepped forward to protest the genocidal slaughter of Palestinians. The ruling class is desperate to prevent opposition to its fundamental interests from spreading and involving masses of people from all parts of society. All this reveals more nakedly than in normal situations the actual dictatorship behind the outer shell of democracy of this country. And it shines a light on the strategic weakness of this system when it does lose the allegiance of major sections of the people. And this has the potential to spread to all parts of society, including among the dominant institutions of this system. I'll be coming back soon with more truth you need to know. Truth the powers that be are determined to keep from you. The truth beneath the claim that this country is continuing to create a more perfect union.